Welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report, chatting with our good friend Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of The Daily Gold. And I usually chat with Jordan about technical factors in gold and gold stocks, including GDX and GDXJ, the ETFs that follow a lot of these stocks. But Jordan, you also look at the fundamentals for the gold market, precious metals in general. And as we were chatting off mic about some of the fundamentals that some analysts claim drive the markets and other analysts look at other fundamentals, they can really switch on a dime depending on which one seemed to be the flavor of the month. There is one fundamental factor that you pay the closest attention to, and this is real interest rates. I happen to agree with you that real interest rates are a major driver up and down to the precious metals. Talk about what we're seeing right now in terms of real interest rates. Uh, well, Corey, what we're seeing is real interest rates have started to tick up again. The reason for that is uh, inflation or the rate of inflation uh, has peaked in the last couple months, and so inflation is likely to be coming down. I mean, the the rate of inflation, statistical inflation, likely to be coming down in the months ahead. And uh, one reason for that is uh, energy prices, of course. And if you look at just if you look at commodity prices, the the entire commodity complex is a proxy for inflation uh commodities are rolling over they've they've if you look at an equal weighted crb because i don't like the cr the the crb was they changed the construction in 2005 2006 and it, it just turned into a total joke where it's like 70 percent energy commodities so looking at a balance commodity index uh it's it's rolled over it's broken key support it, it it's very likely to go back and test its lows and so that tells me, as you can use commodities as a proxy for inflation, that tells me that the rate of inflation is going to continue to come down. And then on the flip side of that, uh, interest rates, uh, at least short-term interest rates, they're still trending higher. I mean, the Fed, we know that one hike is baked in, probably going to do a second. You know, Maybe they'll have a chance to do a third at the very end of the year, uh, but that's a little far off. But if you look at price charts of, say, the two-year yield, five-year yield, uh, those to me look like they can uh, make new highs. You know, maybe the ten-year and the thirty-year, maybe those will not be able to make new highs. But the shorter-term yields, shorter-term interest rates, which really drive gold, uh, those for now they're still going higher. I don't think this is something that is going to last more than uh, a couple quarters. But look, I mean, Real interest rates are now going in the wrong direction for precious metals. I mean, if you're a bull, at least. Uh, so so fu the fundamentals for gold specifically are, are, are worse now, and it looks like they're going to continue to get worse. And that story matches up with what I'm seeing in the charts. So, Jordan, do you think that some of the recent rate hikes that we saw from the Fed, they were on the heels of higher inflation data. And uh, even the Fed was saying they were happy to be behind the curve on this aspect. And there was actually a buy that would come into the precious metals after the rate hikes. Do you think now that maybe some of this inflation data has come off and the narrative has changed to we are stuck in the mud in terms of any sort of inflation growth, that the next couple rate hikes might actually do the opposite for gold and move it down? That's a good question. I mean, it really depends um, how much is priced in and how much more they're going to hike. Um, yeah, I mean, that. It, it, the one thing is the rallies that we've had after um, – We've had decent rallies after the last. Uh, so we've had basically three rallies after the three rate hikes. You had the really big one at the end of 2015, early 2016. Then you had the one at the end of 2016. And then you had the, a, a rally after the March hike. But each rally has been getting smaller and smaller. And gold, it, the last, I mean, people are, say, oh, well, gold, oh, it's going to rally with rate hikes. Well, just... Look at since the the very end of last year, the beginning of this year. I mean, the rally in gold after two hikes, uh, it's only gone from the low 1100s to 1297 versus the year before. 
It went from 1050 to 1375, basically. And gold now, I mean, it's made a lower high. It's nowhere close to breaking above the 2016 high. So, I mean, other than just getting a token bounce, uh, there's no reason to think that the rate hikes are bullish now uh, or some kind of bullish catalyst because of the reason that you said inflation's coming off. Now, the, the Fed, obviously, they they would let inflation run, but they're kind of in a... Uh, I mean, the situation that they're in now is they, even though inflation is peaked and is coming down, they still have a chance to hike uh, before the next recession. And that's why I think they will continue to hike as much as they can until economic data really gets weak and we start to see things roll over. I mean, they don't mind. I don't think they're going to mind. Uh, hiking into the economy getting a little bit worse. I think it, it has to get a lot worse. The stock market has to get worse uh, until they'll stop the hikes. And so that's why I just, I, I think we're going to see at least, uh, you know, probably two more hikes. Obviously, one is already baked in the cake. But the question is really, uh, do we get one or two more after that? And so inflation, uh, if, if it's there, they'll definitely let it run and stay behind the curve. But if it's not there, but the, they can, they still have the chance to hike, uh, they're still going to hike, in my opinion. Hey, I completely agree with you, Jordan. As much as the Fed wants to say that they're looking at employment and inflation statistics, I truly believe that they're keeping an almost closer eye on what the equity markets are doing. And as long as those stay up there, then they're going to have the clearance to continue to hike. And absolutely, one is baked in. Let's see if we get the second later on this year. Jordan, let's switch to some of the charts because gold, well, more or less gold stocks are, do, are having a pretty decent day today. GDX and GDXJ moving up right around 2%. Everybody keeps on talking about how oversold these markets have gotten, especially when you look at silver, which was down what, something like 16 or 17 days in a row, almost a historic move down. Is this going to be a sustainable bounce or more of just a short-term little blip on the longer chart radar? Uh, my gut says it's just going to be a short-term blip. I think, um, I mean, we were talking about before, but it, as far as it, I mean, I don't want to use sustainable, but as far as a tradable bounce, like let's say something that lasts months, like a couple of months at least, um, we could get that after the next sell-off. I mean, as you know, that's something I'm looking for in June or early July. But where we are here and now, I mean, it's true that uh, the, this silver, of course, I mean, I wrote an article about this. Silver, of course, is extremely oversold. I mean, I think we may have talked about it a week ago. Silver today, well, yesterday it closed in the very low 16s. I mean, 1607, according to stock charts. I'm just checking it here. Okay, yeah, silver's up to 1618. Uh, but I think we were talking about it that silver has strong support from about 1590 to I think 1615. So silver after yesterday came down to that range. The daily RSI is at 17. So silver is going to rally, uh, and and it and it may consolidate even for I mean a, a, a couple months. I mean that that's possible. That it, it could take a lot of time for the oversold condition to be worked off. That's what I was meaning to say. But turning back to the the gold stocks, if you look at, the one thing is you can't just look at GDXJ because GDXJ, um, I, I look at, I mean, I have my own junior indices that I look at. You could also look at something like a GOEX. It, it's, I guess it's an Explorer's ETF, uh, but it's, it's kind of like a smaller GDXJ. And if you look at that, um, I mean, it's not that oversold. I mean, it's it's oversold, but it's not like the extreme kind of oversold where this thing has to rally for a month or two. I mean, just looking at looking at that. I mean, going back to GDX. I mean, GDX. Um, it's having a good rally here, but I don't see a huge amount of upside. I mean, it's trading just below twenty two. The fifty days at twenty two sixty eight. So what we're having here and now, Corey, I think this is something that I don't see this lasting. I mean, we're one, two, we're like in the fourth or fifth day of this. I would be surprised if it lasted more than 10 to 15 days or 12 to 15 days. So I, I would I would suspect 
you know, maybe we get at least a couple more days of strength here and, and then maybe it goes sideways for a little while after that. But I think the bounce that we're having here uh, is, is ultimately going to roll over. So is this going to be a down summer, Jordan? Is that what you're saying? That even if we get a little bounce here, maybe some people will get excited, but don't go betting the bank on this because it might be, again, a, a doldrum summer? Well, I mean, it, it, it depends on where you buy and sell, honestly, because if I'm just looking at GDX, I mean, it's holding a, but it's held above uh, the mid-21s on a closing basis. I mean, if you look at a chart, that's key support, but we're, we're setting up for, I mean, we have this token oversold bounce here, and we're setting up for another move lower probably into June, I mean, in, in sometime at the end of this month and then into June. Now, if we get really oversold, like I'm thinking in the middle of July or maybe the end of July um, and we're trading at lower levels. I mean, we're if the the uh, eat the sector is trading at the December lows or maybe even a little bit below, then that is um, th that is the point from which I think we could see like a two month rally. So for the summer overall, I mean, it it's um you know, it, it, it may be OK if we get um, if if we come to that really oversold point that I'm talking about, because then we would be set up for a uh, uh, a bigger bounce that could last, you know, possibly two months or, or something like six to eight weeks. I mean, I'm, I'm on another note, I'm not a fan of seasonality. I, I really that's lazy analysis, but I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry to throw that in there. No, I mean, no, that's, that's a whole, fair. That's a whole that's a whole nother. That's a whole. I mean, that could be a whole nother interview, but it's just kind of a lazy and a, a lazy argument. It's kind of a knee jerk reaction. I don't really pay attention to it that much, although I mean, it does seem I'd have to go back. It does seem gold. Precious metals have a really, really strong tendency to make a bottom in uh june or july so it's fun, funny i just dismissed seasonality but then i gave you a, a seasonal argument i mean there is <laughs> there is a there is a really really strong tendency for that to happen but other i mean other than that other than that i really don't pay attention to seasonality nope fair enough jordan and i do appreciate that you look at your charts and it sounds like the verdict is still out for summer it depends where these stocks bottom and where these metals bottom recently and what kind of a bounce we get, but I think we're all in agreement that this bounce that we might see, at least in the very, very short term, is not going to be an overly strong one. Of course, we can always be surprised, but it just doesn't seem to be going that way, or at least that's not the way we think it will go. Jordan, as always, thanks for your time. Thanks for sharing not just the technicals, but also a fundamental outlook on the metals.